seen the big domino uh, competitions where, they, where, where you'll see it, where there'll be thousands and thousands of dominoes that are set up and going in all different directions and up and down and all around. And when one sets it off, then it leans in and hits the next, which leans in and hits the next until you can see them all moving and all going to where they all come down and you can see the product and oftentimes it'll be in some sort of shape or whatever it is and you'll be able to see it in time as to, as to what happened. Now, I want you to see the generations that way. I want you to see our lives that way, that they're like dominoes, that if we will be obedient in each season of our life, we will then touch into the lives of others that will lean them towards God. If one domino does not do what it needs to do, what it has been called to do by holy purpose and DNA, then that domino will stay there and simply stay still and will not touch the others to lean into the others, and we may not see the effect of what I just read about that ended up in the culmination of Billy Graham coming to know Jesus. This analogy speaks of several lives being used over generations, but there's another quote that is used that I want to share with you this morning, and it's not the concept of each life being a domino and moving by generations. This concept is the idea that there are segments in each one of our individual lives, so in your life, there are certain things that attach to other things that attach to other things. Let's call them for a moment links. Let's call them segments. There's seasons or segments or chapters of life that if we will excel in each link, we'll find that that link has purpose for the whole of what we'll see at the end of our lives when we look back in eternity and say, I see what that link meant to that link, which meant to that link, which meant to that link. So today you're in a segment of life, a season of life that is unique in and of itself. It's not yesterday and it's not tomorrow, but it's a moment that is so absolutely significant. And if I could say this to you, it's so key that you catch this. And that is that there's a now in your life that God wants to enter. And for all the things that you look at in the yesterdays of your life that you could discuss with somebody and say, oh, this is what happened yesterday, and all the things that are your dreams and hopes of things you hope will happen tomorrow, there's something about seizing the now of your life so that you will grab a hold of what God wants to do now. There's, it was, as we looked at with a domino effect, with every domino, it's equal in, in its value. There's not one domino that's more than another domino. Each one is equal. Each must do its part. In the same way, each link in our lives is valuable. And if we skip over and we don't have holy intent and supernatural sensitivity, we may miss something that that link was meant to do that speaks to our past and the healing of our past or the significance of our past, that speaks to the future and what God wants to do in the days ahead with linking you to certain individuals and to significant relationships and, 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 uh, and, and all the things that we see that God wants to do in our lives. And so uh, Winston Churchill made this statement, and I heard it actually on Christian radio when they were doing their thought for the day. And I, and I wrote it down right away, you know, as I was on the road trying to write and, and text and everything else at the same time. No, I didn't do that. No, that was Lisa. Okay, so Winston Churchill said... A similar concept here. He says, it is a mistake. Again, listen to Winston Churchill on this. It is a mistake to look too far ahead. Only one link in the chain of destiny can be handled at a time. And the title of my message today is One Link in Destiny's Chain. It speaks, speaks again of links or segments or seasons, each having its own value each having a need for us to fully focus on that specific moment. Now, let's look at a story in the scriptures that speaks to this, and it's the story of Joseph and, and a favorite of mine in scripture. Now, Joseph, when he's in the pit, that doesn't look like the dreams that he just had that he knew God stirred his heart with. Doesn't look like it. In fact, he must be questioning, God, where are you at this moment when he's in the pit? But there's something that happens in that pit, and we maybe someday on streets of gold and up in heaven, where we may be able to talk with Joseph and say, what did you learn out of that? Why do you believe that God took that link, that segment of your life, and put you in a pit? And maybe his response would be, because I needed to know that I could trust him 
even when everything looked dark, even when I, I, I was worried about even my own life, I could trust him. That allowed me to bring that into the days ahead when there would be a generation that wondered in the midst of a famine if they could trust the God that I presented to them. Fascinating, Joseph. Tell us a little bit about Potiphar's house. You told us about the pit. What is it about that link that was the following link as you're sold into slavery and now you find yourself in the house of an official of the Pharaoh, Potiphar, and you do everything that you do so well in his house and God blesses all of that. What was that all about? Well, it taught me organizational skills. It taught me what it was to take ownership over something that wasn't simply my own. And I did that with excellence. Tell us how that affected your life. Well, I would go in the palace one day, and when I was in the palace and before the Pharaoh, I would organize all things so that we would be able to take all the food and have it there for a time of famine. I get it. I get it. Tell us a little bit about prison. Well, I would interpret the dreams of those that would be in the prison uh, cell, and they were, they were there, so I decided that God gave me that gift. There was no reason for me to hold back. There was nothing I was looking forward to in the days ahead that would call me to use my gift more than that moment. I felt they were right before me. I needed to honor God and the gifting he gave me. What did it mean? Well, it allowed me through that obedience and small things to be used by God in great things. And I was brought before the Pharaoh and I was able to interpret what would happen in the days ahead for a world, for a generation. I get it. You see, each one of those links are significant. We could say with Joseph, the greatest significance with Joseph is that he saved a generation. That's what was significant in a time of famine. Wow, Joseph is the one that saved his generation. All of that is true. And we, by our nature, have a tendency to judge things by the final thing that we look at. We look in biographies, and again, Winston Churchill, what did he do? He helped win World War II, helped defeat a horrible tyrant, dictator by the name of Adolf Hitler. That is true. But any great biographer knows when they write the story of someone that, that uh, has changed history that they must write about each chapter of their life to show how each chapter affected the other chapter of the life. Each link affects the following links. So when we look at that, we can see it in Scripture. I could use so many uh, examples of how it is that God uses even those moments that whisper, even though we look at the moments that shout and think those are the defining moments. You may be in a season right now in a link of your life that whisper. It seems obscure. It seems as if it's just a holding pattern, a waiting time. I want you to consider for me, with me for just a moment a paradigm shift. I have preached about delays and who God is in the midst of the delays in our life, but let's for just a moment consider this idea. And that is the idea, what if there are no delays? Maybe a certain event could be something that you haven't uh, experienced yet, but what if God isn't trying to delay anything? He's a God in the now. 